from ABC News, around the world, and into your home. The stories that touch your life with Hugh Downs and Barbara Walters. This is 2020. Tonight. In my dreams, I'd be whole, riding my horse, playing with my family. And then suddenly I wake up, and it's 2 in the morning, and I'm lying in bed. And I can't move, and I'm on a ventilator. For the first time since his tragic fall, Christopher Reeve tells his inspiring story. Intimate revelations of his personal struggle, wrestling with his broken body, his troubling thoughts. That you wanted to die, pull the plug, whatever. You will meet his family, the children. Thank you, sweetie. Who gave him the will to live, his loving and devoted wife. We will make the best possible life out of this life that we now have. His own words will amaze you and uplift you. There's something else coming. I don't know what it is, but I've got to find it. Barbara Walters with an exclusive, unforgettable hour. A story of fame, misfortune, love, and courage. The journey of Christopher Reeve. A special presentation tonight, September 29th, 1995. After this brief message. Over the last 150 years, all kinds of companies that said they'd be there when you needed them didn't stand up to their promises. That's life. Our policy of thoughtful, prudent investing has kept us well, a pillar of strength for the last 150 years. That's New York Life, the company you keep. Imagine an automobile engineered to such precise tolerances, it feels as if it were formed from a single piece of steel. Introducing the all-new 1996 Mercury Sable. The all-new Mercury Sable. Imagine something better. Imagine yourself in a Mercury. From a tragedy that made the nation heartsick, the story of great inspiration has emerged. And I think the whole family should watch this together because it is a story of remarkable courage an unflagging hope, and the unwavering devotion of a wonderful wife. It's the amazing story of actor Christopher Reeve. Tonight, for the first time since the accident that dramatically altered his life, Christopher Reeve tells his story to Barbara. And you know, when I watched this, I realized that you are not going to want to leave your seat. For years, to millions of moviegoers, Christopher Reeve was Superman. But I think he's more Superman now than ever before. No, he can't fly, and right now he can barely move, immobilized by a devastating spinal cord injury. But Christopher Reeve is nevertheless a man of steel will, a man with penetrating vision, a man whose courage in the face of daunting obstacles is, I think, the mark of a true hero. Audiences all over the world were first introduced to Christopher Reeve hurtling through space as the Man of Steel. Oh. Easy, miss. I've got you. you. You've got me? Who's got you? <laughs> A role that required amazing stunt work, most of which Reeve did himself. But his love of action and adventure wasn't only on screen. This is a man who had piloted his own plane across the Atlantic twice. Reeve was also a skilled sailor, skippering his own sailboat. He was an avid scuba diver. In winter, he and his family played ice hockey. In summer, there was soccer. But most of all, Reeve loved competitive horseback riding, for which he had won many ribbons. These home movies, taken last Christmas, show Reeve and his wife, Dana, with their now three-year-old son, Will. Their family also includes two older children of Reeve's from a previous long-term relationship, Matthew, 15, and Alexandra, 11. This was Reeve's seemingly enchanted world. Oh, wow, wait a minute, I can hardly give well. up. This is his world today. He is paralyzed from the shoulders down. The only movement he can make is to turn his head from side to side. 
Even that is difficult. He directs his wheelchair by blowing into a plastic straw. A hard puff, the chair turns right. A soft one, the chair swings left. Christopher Reeve turned 43 this week. It is now four months since his riding accident, and he is still hospitalized, now at the Kessler Institute for Rehabilitation in New Jersey, where I talk to him in the facility's physical therapy room. How are you today? Pretty good? Very well, thank you, yeah, yeah. I think we should explain to people a little bit about how you talk and how you breathe. There's a respirator that helps you breathe. Right behind the chair is a respirator which generates air. Mm -hmm. And on the breath, I am able to speak because and the thing around my neck is kind of loose and some air goes over the vocal cords. So I just have to wait for the air to come like I did just then and I could talk. Are you in pain? No, I'm not in pain at all, no. Mm -mm. Now, I understand that you have sensation in your neck and shoulders, or, or you tell me. Describe. Yes, I actually have sensation in some weird collection of places. There's a little spot just by my left ribs in the middle. Dana used to touch because it felt so nice to have a connection someplace, you know, and I also, the bottom, very bottom of my left foot, I can feel when somebody touches it lightly. Mm. When somebody touches it lightly, and I have feeling in my shoulders. And of course, my, my head and neck and all, all about my head is very sensitive. But that's about it. And below my shoulders is like, it's all there. But at the moment, I don't feel anything. What do you remember of those first days? Well, I got to be honest with you and say that they had me pretty snowed. Yeah. But I am a, I'm a blank from warming up my horse for the cross-country phase of the, of the competition that I was in. That was Saturday afternoon, May 27th, until the following Wednesday when I, when I came out of the morphine enough. Total blank, but I've been able to put pieces together by talking to people. It was last Memorial Day when Reeve was riding a well-trained chestnut-colored thoroughbred named Eastern Express. During a competition like this one, Reeve was approaching what experienced riders say is an easy three-and-a-half-foot jump. But for some inexplicable reason, Eastern Express stopped dead in her tracks just as she reached the hurdle. Reeve was catapulted headfirst onto the ground. Had a spectator not cleared an airway, Reeve would have died at the scene. You know, one of the things I couldn't understand is like why, I mean, to end up a quadriplegic off a training level jump is virtually impossible. And I was not able to piece that together. Why didn't I put my hands down? Why didn't I? Yeah, why didn't you fall with your hands? Or should why have been you like sure. tripping over your shoelaces, you yeah. know? Why didn't you brace yourself? Yeah. Get up and say, oh darn, and get back on the horse and keep going. Finally, I got some information from somebody who was, who was at the scene and said what happened was, as your horse pulled back and I went forward, I had the great misfortune to get my hand stuck in the horse's bridle. It's like going over with your hands tied, and that's why I landed straight on my head. 200 pounds going straight down like a nail. And then I flipped over, hyperextended and flipped over. And lay very still. You were wearing a helmet. Oh, of course, a helmet and a body protector. And you had done this jump before. Oh, of course, I'm, I'm equipped and qualified. And it was not a particularly dangerous jump. No, I mean, you were not, what I'm getting at is, you were not Christopher Reeve, the daredevil. Gee, I think I'll go out and go out and jump a cross-country course. Yeah. yeah. I train six days a week. See, when I do a sport or a hobby, I take it to as high a level as I can go, and I don't do things. 
I don't do things carelessly or recklessly. So you don't say, what if I'd done this, or what if I'd done no, that? No, this is absolute freak. Dr. Wise Young is director of neurosurgery research at New York University Medical Center and one of the country's leading experts on spinal cord injuries. Feel this bone. This is what 200 pounds of Christopher landed on when he landed on his head. The spinal cord itself is represented by this metal rod and he crushed it and it probably compressed his spinal cord right here. Of course, this is where your spinal cord exits from your brain. It is just a disconnection between your brain and body. And this is why Christopher has lost his body. He's lost his connection to his body. What are the day-to-day -day dangers for you? Well, the biggest danger for me, actually, is if the air hose was become disconnected and nobody knew it. To your respirator? I've had the air hose disconnected in the middle of the night. And you're just lying there in the dark and can't breathe, and you just hope they get to you. How do you tell them? Well, an alarm goes off, but that's only after you've already missed two breaths. I see. And it used to happen fairly frequently, and I used to panic. And of course, that just wastes more air. Now I've learned to hold very still. And I'm much calmer, and they've gotten to me every time, but that's the biggest worry, actually. And also, very curiously, you have to become very knowledgeable about your body, because you have lung problems, skin problems, bowel problems. Bladder problems, all caused by the spinal cord. The brain can't get messages to control those things. Every half hour you have your lungs cleared, something like that? Yeah. Sometimes more, you can't even cough by yourself. You can't even perspire. You know, it's, um... So in July, I couldn't go outside, you know, it's like... Too hot for you. You'd overheat, and then you can have black, you could black out. You have muscle spasms. You have all kinds of things to deal with. And Dana, my wonderful, wonderful wife, is what I said. When it wasn't even certain I was going to live. And I said, do you still want me this way? I know it went through every member of the family's mind. How can he live like this? Someone like this, how can he live like this? But once he was in the ICU, and I could just be near him and next to him and, and look at him and touch him, because then I felt, well, I haven't lost him. He's here. When I first was coming out of, you know, consciousness, and you have the thought, maybe it's not worth everybody's trouble. And I had that thought for maybe 10 minutes. That you wanted to die, pull the plug, whatever. And yeah, I suggested maybe I should just check out. And then Dana said to me, you're still you and I love you. When it's actually the person you love, the person you know, and there's no head injury, no brain damage, it's him, it's the essence of him. And that's what I said to him, is that it's you. I also said, though, of course, that it was his decision, but that I would be there for the long run, no matter what. No matter what had happened, I would be there but that ultimately, of course, it was his decision. Do you know when he made the decision not to have you do this and not to have someone do this? It was when the children walked in the room. And I could see how much they needed me and wanted me. What happens to me when I have a problem is I get embarrassed. I go like, oh, I don't want to cause you people trouble. And I don't want people have to be a burden to take care of me, you know? That was my thought briefly on that afternoon. And then the minute they all came in, and I could see 
the love and feel the love and know that we're still a family and that we're great and how lucky we all are and that my brain is on straight the thought vanished and has never come back again see first two months after my injury the demons would get me in the middle of the night The hours between 2 a.m. and 7 a.m. are the worst. You don't sleep then? I do now, but I didn't then. I lie awake. And I think, what's going to become of me? Woe is me. No, I'm a miserable, so whatever. That's the fact. In my dreams, I'd be whole. Riding my horse, playing with my family. You know, we have a beautiful boat that Dana and I worked on together and built together. We'd be making love, we'd be doing everything. And then suddenly I wake up and it's two in the morning and I'm lying in bed. And I can't move and I'm on a ventilator. Those are the worst times. Those are the worst times, but now, yeah. I sleep through the night. Um, what made the difference? Begin to see there is a future. And as the love and support and friendship of family and friends and people around the world, as all these things came to me and I realized their value, you pull out and go, man, am I lucky. I am so lucky. It's unbelievable. Oh, what an impressive. You know, his courage and his situation remind us all who are lucky enough to have all our faculties mm. that we take for granted, just, just moving our hand, for example. He says looking at a cloud is different. The relationship yeah. with his wife and children, I mean, everything. Boy, I'm never going to complain again. And now he, he can smile when he talks to you. That's what's marvelous. Mm -hmm. You know, it is interesting when he talked about why he landed, you know, six foot four, 200 pounds, landing smack on his head. I hadn't there known was, that until, this, until I saw this. There was a, a spectator there, an anesthesiologist, who was the one who cleared his, his passage so that he could breathe. She watched it. She was the one who saw his hands getting caught in the bridle. And this is the kind of accident that can happen to anyone. This man wore a helmet. He used to do public service announcements. And it affects mostly these accidents, young men in sports accidents. It's amazing. And of course now, being entirely normal from here up, you know, he can, he can smile, swallow, blink. This is what matters, as you will there. hear as they go on. It's marvelous. Well, when we come back, Barbara is going to show you the charmed life of Christopher Reeve before the fall. You'll meet his little boy and watch what is now his daily therapy. You'll find him and his wife amazingly honest about how the accident has affected his body and his outlook and their marriage. Stay with us. For as long as I can remember, my grandmother and her friends have been part of a quilting bee. Is this something you're making for the state fair? It's your wedding quilt, honey. Universal Pictures and Amblin Entertainment present the story of a young woman whose eyes are about to be opened by the women who've seen it all. If you had to choose between marrying a lover or marrying a friend, who would you choose? Winona Ryder, How to Make an American Quilt, rated PG-13. Starts Friday, October 6th at theaters everywhere. Introducing the TL series from Acura. It has all the features of its luxury class competitors, at a very competitive price. The Acura TL series. Once again, we've taken the concept of luxury in an entirely new direction. See the new powerful Acura 3.2 TL, now at your Acura dealer. In business, you can't always count on having enough time. But you can count on AT&T, because only AT&T guarantees you a competitive price. Our 1-800-COMPARE Center will give you an immediate side-by-side -side price comparison. And we're so sure that our prices are competitive that if you don't agree, we'll give you one month's worth of long distance up to $500. These days, you can't count on much, but you can count on AT&T for the life of your business. 
In the spirit of Italian generosity, the Olive Garden offers you the never-ending pasta bowl. Just $6.95. Choose your favorite from our special Olive Garden pasta menu. Then manja. Enjoy as many free refills as you want. Choose from spaghetti and meat sauce, creamy fettuccine Alfredo, and many more delicious never-ending Olive Garden favorites with free soup or salad and breadsticks. The never-ending pasta bowl, only $6.95. For a short time at the Olive Garden, where generosity is a way of life. Once there were only two guarantees in life, death and taxes. I can help you with the taxes, and now I can tell you about a third guarantee, the 100% satisfaction guarantee at Comfort Inns and Suites. If your room isn't right, they'll make it right, or the night's on them. That's right, a refund. For comfort, satisfaction, guarantee, and free continental breakfast, call 1-800-228-5150. In this case, I can't offer to come with you. Darn it. Saturday. Can you imagine fishing in this? It's a Foxworthy anniversary. Get the cake. A new Jeff Foxworthy show. No whipped cream. Then Julia sponsors a bad radio show. Our topic is more naked stuff. And takes on a shop job. What are you doing? Maybe this time. Hello, you're on the air. We'd like our radio station back. <laughs> then it's John Travolta and Kirstie Alley. Now that's entertainment. In a romantic comedy. You must be thinking the same thing I am. <laughs> Lunch. Look who's talking Saturday here on ABC. Sunday, Clark has finally captured Lois's heart. I love you. But when aliens capture her body, can even Superman protect her from these strange beings? It's an all-new Lois and Clark, Sunday on ABC. You heard Christopher Reeve's amazing words, I am so lucky. How can a man who has been robbed of so much feel that way? Well, perhaps you will understand as I did. When you get to know his wife, Dana, better, certainly before the accident, fortune seemed to favor Christopher Reeve. Not only was his career growing, but he had also fallen deeply in love. We pick up his story now at the beginning. A star is born. Christopher Reeve is the eldest son of two intellectuals, a college professor and a newspaper writer. His parents were divorced when Reeve was four, and he and a younger brother were raised by his mother in Princeton, New Jersey. Reeve discovered his calling early, performing at age nine at a local theater. He says he was an awkward teenager, too tall, too lanky, he thought. Being on stage helped him get dates. I would invite the girl I was interested in to come see me in the play. And in the play, hopefully you're a little more interesting than you are otherwise. After college, he studied drama at the Juilliard School in New York City. And after graduation, he did well, working in repertory theater, and even landing a Broadway role in a play starring Katherine Hepburn. You were doing well. You were acting. You had some good parts. But Superman really took you from the young, good actor on his way up. A to New York actor to, yeah, movie actor. To superstar. A mixed blessing. I would say so, yeah. You didn't really want the part, I hear. I was sort of a snob about it. I didn't think they could make a movie of Superman. I thought it would be kind of hokey. I didn't quite get it that this guy is a cultural icon. You know, and um, I became, for the 70s and 80s, the custodian of that icon. Superman the movie became a critical and worldwide box office success. Thank you. Woo! Excuse me. That's a bad outfit. Reeve went on to do three sequels. But by that time, it was hard for you to be taken as the serious actor that you really are. I didn't experience that. You didn't? You mean you, you got the other roles after the Superman? Yeah, in fact, I got too many roles. Really? I could have done almost any movie I wanted to do. But I'm now, I'm still only 26. And I'm not a veteran film actor yet, I'm, so I was scared. So to tell you the truth, it was the opposite that many people think. For example, I was cast in American Gigolo, but I passed, Richard Gere did it. I turned down Body Heat, I chickened out on that one. Turned down Body Heat, you turned down American Gigolo, turned you turned down, down, down the bounty. Mutiny and the Bounty. I just chickened out, and I thought, I don't know what I'm doing. 
Despite the fact that Reeve passed on so many important roles in his film career, he was always working, making nine other films over a 10-year period. In 1993, the prestigious filmmaking team Merchant Ivory cast him in the Oscar-nominated Remains of the Day as a distinguished U.S. Senator. I want you to know I have the greatest respect for the English story. I love it over here. In fact, my family used to bring us here as kids, so I've always felt right at home. With this role, Reeve felt he had hit a stride. His reputation was growing, and this year, 1995, was to be his year. I would have said in about the last year or two, I was just beginning to get the hang of it. I must admit I am disappointed that now I will be I'm missing some of those opportunities I was looking forward to. It was, was going to be a big year this year. I was going to do Kidnapped for Francis Ford Coppola in Ireland. I was supposed to start shooting a week after my accident. Then I was going to do a movie for his mom merchant with Jean Moreau called The Proprietor, and then I was going to direct a film. You are going to direct a film? Uh, in October. I mean, like right now. You know, certain things like that, when you look at it, you just have to say, okay, you know, there's something else coming. I don't know what it is, but I've got to find it. In the meantime, there is a long road of rehabilitation. Critical physical work, stretching and lifting, must be done for anyone with an injury like Reeves. Go ahead, push it back, push it back. I can, I can take it. It is estimated that there are a quarter of a million people who have been paralyzed in this country, a population that is overwhelmingly male and overwhelmingly young, most often from car wrecks and sports accidents. Your favorite direction. Yeah, left is hard. Pull, 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 pull. Reeve must have his limbs moved and stretched up and down to keep his muscles and joints supple and flexible. Hey, Will. <laughs> Some days it becomes a family affair with Dana and young Will doing the heavy lifting, raising arms and legs that were once so active, but are now dead weight. Oh, good, that's great, Will, thanks. There is nothing that is easy. Everything is a struggle. And there's, of course, also all of the things that we are slowly mourning the loss of and moving on from, and that is the, the loss of things, of course, a very active man. Whatever he does, he does to the highest level he can possibly achieve, which is what he's doing now. I mean, he really is. That's part of who he is. But also things, the thing that is the hardest, I think, for me to think about is um, him playing the piano, because that's something not many people know that he, he knows how to do. And that's something that he and Will have shared a lot. to sing to Chris when he was unconscious. Yeah. What did you sing? It's our song. We sing with Will. And it's called This Pretty Planet. This pretty planet spinning through space. You're a garden. You're a harbor. You're a holy place. Golden sun going down. Gentle blue giant, spin us around all through the night. Safe till the morning light. Dana and Chris first met eight years ago when they were both performing in regional theater. 25-year-old Dana Morosini was singing at a late-night cabaret. Reeve was in the audience, and he says he could not take his eyes off of her. It was intense attraction at first sight. Yeah. Yeah, it was intense. Which developed very quickly into love. Yeah. They married in 1992, when Dana was seven months pregnant with their son, Will. You were married for, what, three years before the accident? Yes. Things going well? Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, it was... Chris actually used to say every day for the first year or so that we were married, every day he would say, gosh, I love being married. I love being married. This is actually a good deal. I That's can't believe it. Yeah, we should have done this before. 
What did you learn from Dana? Oh, my God, there's, a, there's that commitment, true commitment. True commitment transforms you. You really know where you stand. You have a base on which to build your life. You're not in the shifting sand anymore. And yet the relationship can grow and change, and what has happened since the injury is we were always happy together, and we were always in love, but... I would say it's we've now transcended into something where our moments together are even more valuable than they ever were. Dana has not missed one day in the 12 weeks. Driving often three hours a day just to come be with me. There are people in this hospital whose husband wives, you know, drop in on a Sunday for 10 minutes. And I would not be where I am today with the positive outlook that I have and the sense of real hope and purpose if it were not for Dana. We will make the best possible life out of this life that we now have. And there's no question that he will continue to be a leader and continue to be a strong person and a funny person and a lively person. I look at you holding your husband's hand. Yeah, I know. You don't feel that. You can't feel it. No, I can't feel it. No. no, but that is, I, you're talking about some of the toughest parts. That's, that is tough because I can feel him, but he can't feel me. Except up here, yeah. I spend a lot of time touching him here and touching his face and all of that is sensitive. Yeah. But mm. it's, yeah, I mean, and not being able to get hugged back and stuff, that's hard. Yeah. You also go as a discover, as I'm discovering. that your body is not you, and the mind and the spirit must take over. And that's the challenge as you move from obsessing about why me, and it's not fair, and when will I move again, and all of those things and move into, well, what is the potential? And now, four months down the line, I see opportunities and potential I wasn't capable of seeing. Back in Virginia in June, we have genuine joy. We experience the genuine joy of being alive because every moment means more. Every moment is more intense and valuable than it ever was. I received 100,000 letters from all over the world. And it makes you wonder, you know, why do we need disasters to really feel and appreciate for each other? But, you know, it's sure coming now. And I'm overwhelmed by people's support of me. And if I can help people understand this can happen to anybody, that's worth it right there, not to mention my family. So I really sense being on a journey, and it's very interesting. Hmm. What journey? Their little boy, Will, seems to be taking it in stride. What was his reaction to this right angle turn? He was with Dana when the doctors first told Dana that Chris was paralyzed because she didn't have a babysitter that day. When, when he first saw his father with all the tubes, she was very worried about it. But now it's Daddy. He crawls in his lap, He's all kisses him. Adjusted. Yeah, it is Daddy. This is what everyone is understanding that this is unaffected. Still there. And this is where the love is. Well, you know, a big question is. Will Christopher Reeve ever walk again? And when we come back, one of the country's leading researchers in spinal cord trauma has an opinion. So does Christopher Reeve himself. And then Dana Reeve reveals their family plans. Will there be and can there be more children? Barbara has all of that. Next. Uh, if everyone's ready, I'd like to get started. <clears throat> 
The all-new Chrysler Town & Country LXI has... Excuse me, how would you compare the leather-trimmed seats to Lexus? Well, both have power and memory, but in terms right, of minivans... Uh, these dual climate zones. Now, isn't BMW doing something similar? Yes, in the 3 Series. However... I like that it handles more like a touring sedan. Excuse me, but isn't anyone going to compare it to another minivan? Anyone? Some women have secret fantasies. They called her Jade. She couldn't get enough of it. She loved it. Some women have secret lives. I got 32 separate cuts. What do you have to hide? I cheated on my husband. I didn't know I could be arrested for I think she did it. One of them killed Kyle and Patrice. I could be next. Jade, read it on. Starts Friday, October 13th everywhere. Unlike those big juice companies, we have a different idea about stock growth, market indicators, even futures. Florida's natural premium brand, not from concentrate juice, is made by a co-op of growers whose only business is making juices. They own the land, the trees, the company. So although our idea of stock analysis hmm, may be a little different, it's a difference you can taste. Florida's natural premium brand juice. spend my life working on a medicine that might help my grandchildren. There are people that need it now. They can't wait. There are millions of people counting on us. There are patients out there that are sick now that we can have an impact yeah. on. I come to work thinking, you know, I want to improve the situation for people. Tomorrow might be the day. Medicines to the patient faster. We're going to get the answers. Glaxo Welcome on the brink of discovery. A teacher and student at the center of a sex scandal. You, a married woman, a teacher. NYPD Blues, Gail O'Grady. There was never anything more between us than friendship. Did she or didn't she? Inspired by actual events. Trial by Fire premieres Sunday. Saturday, an ABC College football doubleheader kicks off at noon Eastern with regional action. Boston College meets Michigan State. Alabama takes on SEC rival Georgia. Or Texas Tech tackles Baylor. Then traditional powers meet in a national showdown. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame battle the Ohio State Buckeyes. It's all Saturday on ABC Sports. A tragic accident, a life-changing injury. Can medical science help Christopher Reeve? Will he ever move on his own? There's new research, reason for hope, and the Reeve family plans for the future when 2020 continues after this from our ABC stations. KVU 24 News, tonight. I'm Judy Maggio. If you're an Austin taxpayer, then you just gave the new school superintendent a raise. Less than a year on the job, and Jim Fox is getting more money. We'll tell you why. Plus, it is a done deal. The marriage between Seton and Brackenridge Hospital. Find out what it means to patients tonight on KVU 24. You hang around a person, and they selling drugs, but you ain't doing it. But if somebody selling drugs in a police cash dump, you going down with the person that's selling drugs. Introducing the Comfort Collection. Sofas and chairs stuffed with so much comfort, you may want to settle in till next spring. The Comfort Collection from Ethan Allen. Come see what's on sale. Texas Wildlife Expo. Outdoor fun for the whole family. Catch a fish, climb a rock, launch an arrow, and get up close to some Texas wildlife. There's something for everyone, and it's all free. Texas Wildlife Expo, September 30th and October 1st in Southeast Austin. Don't miss it. This Friday and Saturday only at Circuit City, everything is on sale. That's right, it's all on sale. So Circuit City's everyday low prices will be even lower. Over 140 top brand TVs are on sale. Over 70 VCRs. Over 45 of the best camcorders sale priced. All computers are on sale. Over 100 appliances are on sale. So are audio components. And every CD is sale priced just $10.88 or less. You heard it right. Thousands of CDs, $10.88 or less. All the good stuff, all the stuff you want. It's all on sale. Circuit City, this Friday and Saturday only. We're finally eating at your favorite restaurant, The Lodge at Lakeview. Dinner was superb. Of course, the service here is first class, and dining on the lake just can't be beat. You were right. It just doesn't get any better than The Lodge at Lakeview. If you have a tip for Crime Stoppers, call 472-TIPS. From ABC News, 2020 continues. Once again, Barbara Walters. 
Christopher Reeve is indeed on a very personal journey, but part of the road before him is well-traveled. There are something like 250,000 victims of spinal cord injury. Up until 10 years ago, those with the most severe damage rarely survived, let alone regain movement in their bodies. But now there is hope for them, and Christopher Reeve as well. And as we continue, we will look into the future. What will it bring for Chris and his family and his career? What possibilities does it hold for the treatment of spinal cord injuries? This is a rat that has been more severely injured. And you can see this rat can move his legs uh, to some extent. And this rat should be recovering. It is a medical breakthrough that is both tantalizing and frustrating. Laboratory rats with severe spinal cord injuries that can move again with the help of innovative drug, cell, and gene therapies. Yet it is years away from use in humans. At the present time, there are two or three very promising leads in the scientific field, in, in laboratories. What scientists now believe is that there's something in the spinal cord that inhibits growth. The spinal cord cannot repair itself. It actually stops that repair and the growth. And a protein has been identified, which is the inhibitor. Now, many people say that this is impossible. The central nervous system cannot regenerate. But it did. It did once when we were growing up. We have to know what those signals are. Doctor, most people have said that Christopher Reeve's condition is hopeless. Just hopeless, that he will always be like this. What's your feeling? I think it's too early to close the door on his prognosis. And I have personally seen patients improve two to three years after injury. Now, as time passes, hope ebbs. Do many of the people who are in Chris's condition uh, want to die? Probably the thought has crossed many of their minds. It's a terrifying condition. What do you tell these patients? It's hard. It's very hard. When I spoke to Christopher, the, the hardest thing for me is to ask a man in his position to be patient. You know, he has these blue eyes looking at you, and he says, when? I can only say, we're working very hard on this, and it may take seven years, ten years. And this is eternity for somebody like Christopher. Hi. Hi, how are you? Hi. Who are you here to see? I'm here to see uh, Chris, Chris Reeve. Encouragement comes from other quadriplegics, people like Henry Stifel, who was paralyzed 13 years ago in a car accident. On his frequent visits, he tells Reeve about the progress he has made. I was able to feed myself a little bit. So just with the use of my shoulder muscles and my bicep, I was able to eventually uh, drive, drive the chair with a hand drive. But since then, there hasn't been more recovery? No. No, there hasn't. So it all came relatively quickly? It came within uh, a year and a half. Oh, well, I'm only four months in. Yeah. Despite Reeves' optimism, a tabloid recently reported that he wanted to pull the plug. There have been reports in the tabloids that you want to die now, that you've asked Dana to help you. Yeah, and they were consulting with lawyers about how to do it. Yep, so that it wouldn't, what it said was something like, so that uh, so it wouldn't she, be it wouldn't She wouldn't be, murdered. be charged with murder. Yeah. Sickening. On behalf of all the fans, all the people around the world have sent me their love and support. I want them to know I never had any such thought or such statement. The press has been so supportive and so understanding. And to have that come out just blew my mind. When you began by saying, why me? I don't want to push this too far. But do you ever say, I know why me? Because I can make a difference now that maybe I never could have before? Yes. That thought occurs to me exactly as that, in a way, You can say either the universe is totally random and it's just molecules colliding all the time and, you know, it's totally chaos. 
And that our job is to make sense of chaos. Or you can say sometimes things happen for a reason. And your job is to discover the reason. But either way, I do see meaning and opportunity. Um, and that has made all the difference. You see, I think our Congress makes a huge mistake because they're running around trying to cut Medicaid, Medicare, welfare, etc. But the way you save money is you stop the disease. You don't try to deal with it on the other end. For example, five billion dollars a year is spent on just keeping people with spinal cord injuries ticking over. Five billion dollars for people with spinal yeah. cord injuries? Two hundred thousand people in the United States alone have the same problem as me. And a lot of them are very poor people. A lot of them are on welfare now. A very small amount of money, some say as little as 40 or 50 million dollars, if that would be spent on research, if you would invest in the research, you could cure Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis, and spinal cord injury in the very near future. I bet you, in my life, and maybe even the next 10, 15 years, if the public will demand that the politicians spend that little bit of money, make that investment, I'll be up and walking around again. And one of the things, Chris, I mean, if anything good can come out of this, is that you can talk to Congress. You can talk to people. I've already been nominated to the board of directors of the American Paralysis Association. And I will be doing work for them. I will be going to Congress to make the case about the economic argument. What we're going to try to do is keep it single floor living and so while we'll reeves sets his sights on his future life of activism i talked to dana at their home in new york state about what her plans are for their daily life together what are the immediate goals to get him home to get him settled at home to get our family back together to reestablish some sort of routine what is the physical goal the first hope would be uh a, some sort of weaning process off of the ventilator. We're also hoping that he'll get some arm movement. Chris has called you his rock of Gibraltar. He depends so, so much on not just your love, but on all the things you can do for him. Mm -hmm. That's an awfully big responsibility. Yeah, it is. Um, but I think this is a real test of the wedding vows. He's my partner. He's my other half literally there's I, I i couldn't i don't it's not within the realm of my imagination to do anything less than what i'm doing this is delicate but chris told me this himself you have one son mm -hmm. chris said it would be possible for you two to have other children i'm not sure i understand that i'm not sure i understand it either but it's um there are, how do I describe it? It's a reflex. <laughs> I mean, that's, mm -hmm. uh, and that um, it has happened. There are other couples who are, uh, the man is a quadriplegic, and they've been able to conceive children. It's an automatic reflex. It's part of the, it's part of that reflex system, as opposed to the, the other neurological reflex system. So it would be possible. Yes, yes. In fact, to... it is possible. In fact, it is possible. <laughs> yes. I'm here to tell you. <laughs> do you want to have other children? Yes. Yes, I hope we do. In the months ahead, you'll be leaving here. And then, how do you see your life? Oh, busy, busy, busy. Mm -hmm. We're in the process now of starting to redesign our house. And rather than looking at the limitations, we look at the opportunity. And you plan to direct? And plan to direct, yep. 
Chris, has anyone offered you the opportunity to direct? Yes, they have. In fact, I'm supposed to be doing a movie now. And do you think you can still? I am honored by the fact that the producer that announced that they will save the movie for me. They're going to save the movie for your yeah. direct? So when I'm ready, we'll do the movie. And you have the creative coalition that you've been working on for years. You've always been active, whether it's for the homeless or environment or AIDS. You've always been active. Yes, I uh, started in college. So that won't stop. So you see things widening, opening up. Yeah, which I wouldn't have thought possible. We must overcome the pessimism in this field. There are therapies that work in animals. We have to test them in people. And when we test them in people and they work, then we can apply them to people like Christopher. It, this process is much slower, much harder, much longer than, than people understand. Is it within your vision that Christopher Lee would ever walk again? Oh, I hope so. Really? I, I'm certainly aiming for that. Um, Not false hope? It's a personal hope. Um, otherwise, I could not work in this field. And you think you will walk again? I think it's very possible I'll walk again. And if you don't? Then I won't walk again. As simple as that. Either you do or you don't. See, it's like a game of cards. And if you think the game is worthwhile, then you just play the hand you're dealt. Sometimes you get a lot of face cards, sometimes you don't. But I think the game's worthwhile, I really do. God, what a partnership, what a family. Like Can I just say thank you to Chris and thank you to Dana? Sure. You know, it crossed my mind that life support system and the therapy and everything is quite costly and that it can't help affecting the family finances. Well, first of all, in general, there is an American Paralysis Association in Springfield, New Jersey. And to talk about finances for the family is, is very sensitive to them, but it will cost something like $400,000 a year for Chris's care. And there's no telling how much insurance will cover that. He's not a rich man. He didn't make a great deal of money in films. There has been set up a Christopher Reeve fund in, in Kansas. He is looking forward. He mentioned the Creative Coalition. He is looking forward to making his first public appearance October 16th. He's going to give an award that, that the Creative Coalition of, of Funds of the Arts. He's going to give an award to Robin Williams. Let me tell you a story. When he was first uh, barely conscious, uh, wasn't eating, uh, uh, wasn't drinking, in came a doctor in a white coat and a mask, and it turned out to be Robin Williams, who was his best friend from acting school, who did that wacky Russian doctor routine. And Reeves said that he woke up, looked at him, started to laugh, and he said, I wrote it down, That's it was one of the first indicators that life could be good again. Oh, so he's going to present that <laughs> award to Robin Williams. He sure is playing a role of great importance now, and it strikes me that he has as much to live for now as he had before the accident. Good luck to him. I think it's changed all of our lives just seeing this. I hope so. We'll be right back. Imagine hearing the call of the road, not the road itself. Imagine having the world at your fingertips. Imagine worrying less and enjoying more. Imagine an automobile so precisely engineered it feels as if it were formed from a single piece of steel. Introducing the all-new 1996 Mercury Sable. Imagine yourself in a Mercury. There is a need in all of us, a need to get back to our beginnings, to our feelings. There is a way to renew, a way to look back without going backwards. There is Biolage, with purifying botanicals and herbal extracts to rejuvenate your hair as soothing aromas clear your mind. Biolage, hydrating shampoo and conditioning balm, a way for your hair to get back to its beginnings. From Matrix, expanding the salon experience. Deadlines have no mercy. Thankfully, wherever you are, whenever you're finished, you can modem a document to Sir Speedy 24 hours a day, seven days a week.
Sir Speedy will print, copy, bind, and deliver your work when and where you need it. Going online is fast and free. Just call your nearby Sir Speedy and be part of the printing, copying, digital network. ABC News 2020 will continue in a moment. Tuesday on an all-new Murder One. The victim's secret diary has explosive revelations that send shockwaves throughout Hollywood. For all we know, Jessica was planning on blackmailing one of these men. There'll be a lot of sweaty palms on the west side. Murder One, Tuesday, 10, 9 central on ABC. It's Action Monday. Get me a car! The marshal tracks down a bank-robbing fugitive, and only his daughter holds the key to finding him. He's got a hostage. Will she be caught in a trap? Jeff A. He is the marshal. Then on Monday Night Football, AFC Powers duel at the dog pound. When Jim Kelly and the Buffalo Bills tackle the Cleveland Browns, the marshal in Monday Night Football on ABC. Telecommunications today in Texas. A brave new frontier. Progressive new laws. More competition. More choices. Hundreds of millions invested in new technology for our schools. Toll-free access to the Internet for schools. Distance learning. Teleconferencing. Telemedicine. Superior network quality. Decades of experience. And who's bringing the technology of tomorrow to Texas today? Southwestern Bell. It's that simple. Now, it's up to the jury in the O.J. Simpson case. Closing arguments wrapped up just hours ago with dramatic words about the victims from Prosecutor Marsha Clark. And they both are telling you who did it with their hair, their clothes, their bodies, their blood. They tell you he did it. He did it. Mr. Simpson, Orenthal Simpson. He did it. ABC legal correspondent Cynthia McFadden joins us from Los Angeles now. And Cynthia, you were in the courtroom, and I'd like to know how you feel the prosecution's final arguments today affected the jury. Did they well, react? Well, Hugh, uh, this jury has been stoic throughout, and I can only tell you while they were attentive, they showed no uh, emotion whatsoever. However, the families in the courtroom, the Brown family and the Goldman family, were simply dissolved in tears. Mrs. Brown sobbing in the courtroom. O.J. Simpson looked away. The defense looked to me to be unhappy, the whole team. They, they were very unhappy. Marsha Clark was speaking with all the power of a person who has the last word. They were very unhappy, and they objected consistently, though the judge told them they need not. Uh, they were trying to signal the jury, I think, about things that they were still skeptical about. So what happens now? Well, the, the, the very last thing that happened was the jurors actually elected a foreperson in five minutes. The judge said that was a good sign that maybe they would be able to reach a conclusion. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you. Well, the Simpson case is also the focus of Nightline tonight, and here is Ted Koppel with a preview. Tonight, it's taken more than a year, but finally, it's in the hands of the jurors. Listen to what they heard in the dramatic conclusion of closing arguments as we bring you a special extended edition of Nightline tonight. Nightline, after your local news, and we'll be right back. Up next on KV24 News at 10, it's now up to the jury to decide the trial of the century. And an Austin police officer is accused of raping another officer's wife. We'll have that and more up next on KV24. Things to write about. Oh, this is a growing town, Brian. Problem isn't what to put in the Gazette, but what to leave.